My name is Chuanda Godfrey Suvi. I'm the Minister of State for Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities. And now, I'm also the minister. I'm holding the portfolio of the minister. My senior colleague is on leave, so. And I have, I happen to be a salongo. So I'm not only a salongo at home, but even at the ministry now. Uh, I want to thank the organizers and the owners of the Truckers Safari Lodge for inviting us for this evening to have this great evening. But most I want to thank all of you for keeping the fire burning and the candle of the tourism sector. These days we have a Kaseja challenge since yesterday <laughs> that the economy is <laughs> so I can say that even tourism is at <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I don't think if the economy is at <laughs> and they are because tourism is at <laughs> <laughs> so um, thank you so much for making it and we believe that we can move. I was sharing with my neighbors there that actually if tourism is to thrive, this is the time. We don't have any other time. We cannot blame anybody. This is our time. Of course, as a country, you know, we had a lot of issues. Issues with the infrastructure issues with uh, security, which we've actually now at least overcome. If you talk about the security today, of course you know where we are. I used to work in Karamoja in 2007 to 2010. And on the street, as you move on the highways, you find wrestlers killing people on, on the way. Of course, pe many people are killed. And by that time, you could not talk about tourism. You could not sell Kidepo in 2003, 2005. You couldn't go through Nakapiripiri, Kotido, Moroto, Kabong. You couldn't. Time come when well, there was a time when you couldn't even talk about Achori. You couldn't talk about Maction Falls. The. Um, Maction Falls today that we're talking about was the home of Konyi. So you couldn't sell all this. Remember the issues we had with um, in Kasese and uh, very many other places. Now our country has been pacified fully. Fully. You move from corner to corner at, at any time that you can move. And the country is peaceful. Of course, that is the tourism product number one. Peace is our tourism product number one. When we talk about issues, I want you always to put them right because for you have been in the business and you, you know what it means when a country is, is in chaos. If some people doubt this, I want them to, to do a package for Somalia or Central African Republic or some other countries. You see how it is. So at times we take this for granted. But this government put priority number one, security. And we are enjoying, we are here. My brother from Kabari can now drive to Kabari. Eh? I've traveled at night. I've visited your places, I've visited lodges at night. You move from here to the other one. At night, at times we even get lost in you are in the dark, but at least you know you are safe. You find people when they are drunk at two or three, but actually they are okay. I know we are also improving on the infrastructure. We have a lot of issues on our roads, especially the, the, the road surface, I know. Somebody complained about it, and actually the last time I was, I was at trackers, I tested this. But of course, when I entered the lodge, I forgot everything that I went through. So like my wife, wherever you come from, a labor ward, she will tell you, as you go, she, if you, as you go, and you tell her that you are going to have a second bone, 
she will almost slap you. But as you come back, she will say, oh, when is the next engagement? <laughs> so our truckers, of course, as we, 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 because of the road surface, we used to complain, but now it has been improved. But of course, the comfort that you get at the lodge could even make you to forget the difficulties that you, you went through as you, you got the lodge. So I want to, first of all, to congratulate you, uh, my brother, for having saved your little coin. Of course, when you go to Trucker's Lodge, Safari Lodge, it's very difficult to tell that this lodge has been set up by Ugandan. You can't imagine. Of course, when the, last, the, the first time I was there, I found our daughter there. She was the one managing. She told him, Dad is in Kampala. Then I said, but your dad is, is a Muzungu? What? He said, no. <laughs> My dad is actually from a Uganda. He's a Ugandan. I said, are you sure? Or you've forgotten? He said, no, my dad is. So he, she gave me daddy's number. I called him. He's in Kampala. I said, are you a Ugandan? You are the one who has put this? He said, yes. So thank you so much for having chosen to do this in our tourism industry. And uh, thank you so much. As government, I just want to say our work is to promote, our work is to make sure that we do, we make everything possible to promote destination in Uganda. This year, we are coming up with a theme that we are going to unveil on Tuesday 15th, which is sharing our story for better tourism numbers 2019 through the digital transformation. We must share our story. We have a very beautiful story as a country, but we've not shared it enough. We must share this story. We are launching this theme after on Tuesday, and um, we are coming with very many other initiatives. How best are we going to share our story? It's a very beautiful story. Of course, anyone who tells us about that we, it's a virgin land, some of the places are not known. It's an advantage that most, most of these, some of our friends are expiring, but as a country now, for us, we are just entering, and I know our benefits are going to be much bigger than they've never been before. Um, the destination of actually now divided our marketing strategy into four. Of course, the Tulamble, which is really domestic, and they want to encourage Ugandans to know about our country. And the purpose is that we cannot market something that we don't know. Apart from you, people who are doing safari, who are owning the, the companies, there are very few Ghanaians who know about this country. Very few. And with the era of the social media today, of course, everyone has become a marketeer. Everyone is a news person because somebody <laughs> is no longer waiting for something that happens on, on, BB, on, 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 on Radio Uganda, on whatever. You know, it's not. People are no longer... Be, so anyway, you know, so we need to get clear information. And how do we do this? We must encourage these people to visit. Because the last time I went to one of the hotels, I was interacting with the receptionist. So I asked her, I pretended as if I had not come from Uganda, what can I see around here? Ah, this country. Wow, what are you going to see? The only thing which is in this town is tear gas. <laughs> you know? And this place, have you gone? Hey, the other place is so dirty. And you remember this is a person at the, at the front desk telling a visitor about a country, and that, that's the kind of story he, he, she is sharing with a visitor. We must change this. We must have a better way to tell our story. And we are the people to tell our own story. And we tell our story better. We tell our story better. This story cannot be told by only you, the guides, not, not by the Minister of Tourism, not by the UTB. It is a story which must be owned by every Ugandan. The last time I was in London, I had, there was a jump in those black taxis. I, had, I suffered in taxi for almost three hours. But the guy had entertained me. He knew any, everything about London. And he was telling me just about building. That building was built in 1920. This was the other one. They were just talking about buildings. But I was entertained because this guy owned the London story. We must own this story. We must tell a story to the Ugandans, a story to the East Africans, a story to Africans, a story to the rest of the world. That's why we've segmented our marketing into Tulambule, 
twende Uganda want to introduce what called special night special Kampala night we are negotiation with some of the hotels here in Kampala every after one month we must uh, two months we are holding a concert in Kampala called twende Uganda Kampala concert where we need people from Juba Bujumbura Chigari Nairobi Dar es Salaam Chisumu here they come and they enjoy Kampala and as they conclude and they enjoy if they've been here for a weekend on a Monday you take them for safari you take them yes and i want you to encourage you package this package east africa talk about kenyans the last time when the kenyans when they read their report they say that actually uganda is their biggest market next to america but just imagine how many kenyans have visited us if you go to the streets of kampala today if you ask the affluent families uh, people of your you know at your standard they will, they will tell you more about Nairobi. I know I've ever been in Kisumu. I know this. I know this. But if you do this, the streets of Nairobi, no one knows about Uganda. Very few of them have ever been here. Why? We've, you don't think that this has come just by accident. No. Success is a choice. It's not a chance. Don't think they've, they've been successful to attract Ugandans to Kenya just by chance. It's been a choice. So I want to call upon you, let's package the East Africans. Let them also come here. We have a lot that Kenyans that can also experience here. So thank you so much for choosing to be in this, and, uh, in this um, industry. And I know many people have attracted very many people now when people's sitting rooms on their phones, in their bedrooms, they should talk about tourism. Yes, that's why every day... Um, Every, uh, every we come up with a new initiative. Of course, they talk about this. When you, when, you, when you come with the Rolex, they abuse you, they do what? But I know they've talked, it. They've talked about it. The next day when you visit with Zari, oh my God. Zari, Zari, but I know you are talking Zari in relation with tourism. Now I'm going with Benach, I think, next week. It's going to be war. Then the other day there is Chameleon. The other day there is, you know, they are coming on board. And I know Marketing, we must come up with every initiative that possible. And it's not, we are not competing, but we're actually complementing. Each one that we bring on board is complementing on each one's other effort. So I want to thank you. Thank you so much, my brother. This has been a great evening. You've made me to interact with the stakeholders of the tourism industry. I want to bring greetings for my senior colleague, Professor Ephraim Kamuntu, is on leave. But we, we enjoy you because tourism is private led. We cannot do this alone as a ministry, but we depend on your effort. And thank you so much. Thank you very much. For God and my country. May God bless you. Thank you very much. That's a platinum handshake. <laughs> thank you, Honorable. You've heard. Share the story. Honorable. As you take your seat, I would like to share briefly my story. Honorable, we are next to Kololo. Now, this is a very interesting place. You have heard of Chief Awich? Chief Awich, who resides.